Okay, so just a, a quick preamble. I'm not going to go through everything that's on these pages. You'll find that this presentation is on our website, plus other materials. Um, uh, so I'm going to try to hit the highlights and allow time for uh, questions afterwards. Well, of course, we've got a disclaimer there. Please read that at your leisure. That's important also. Um, but don't intend to read that out. I think you've probably, most of you have probably seen this slide, but it, it, it's just worth noting that uh, ADX is already in production. We've run about 320 barrels a day net in the past year. We've on 1 uh, over 1.6 million barrels of reserves already. And prospective resources, which are those that we estimate under certain prescribed rules, are attached to all of other prospects. And um, in addition, we're quite advanced with plans uh, that would lead to the company having uh, 47 megawatts of power generated by renewable energy projects. I'm just going to say one of the advantages uh, for ADX compared with other small companies in Australia is uh, we're in a place where the, all the infrastructure is in place. Uh, when we're ready and uh, can go or want to go or put the effort into uh, renewable energy projects, we'll be able to do it much more easily than we could here unless you're in some pretty specific locations. This, this slide, um, oh, oops, sorry, pardon me. Okay, so uh, this presentation is primarily going to be addressing what we're doing in Austria. Personally, I'm still coming up to speed with what's happening in Italy. You may have noticed there's been um, some um, progress made there recently. Likewise, Romania, very prospective, but it's Austria where all our news flow is coming from at the moment, and we're making the most advancements. Over here, we have the capital structure of the company. Um, you can see the market cap, really quite small when you consider what the company's done uh, or what the company now has, uh, our number of shareholders, and so on. Uh, one thing I, I want to say is, um, again, this refers to Austria is, um, they take a very realistic view of how they need to assure the future of that uh, country. It's a terrific um, risk factor that the government of Austria needs to deal with uh, the Russia-Ukraine war. They can't afford not to be doing something with their hydrocarbon reserves. And so their rules, although tough, are fair, and they really want us to go out there and find and develop oil and gas. In terms of what the company's doing, uh, we've now raised all the money we need and um, we've got a very busy program ahead, very busy for a small company. And we're going to be bringing in from the outside, uh, Ian's been talking to some of those people in his uh, current trip, uh, experts in the fields that we need to bolster the size of our team uh, over in um, Vienna, for example, and even here in Australia. We've got uh, a discovery of gas and liquids, uh, hydrocarbon liquids, that is, at Wellchow, and you know, if you've been involved with uh, companies, growing companies uh, anywhere along the way, you really get busy when you're buying something. We were a well testing program at our Anshelf, uh, uh, and, and a, or oh, sorry, a well testing program to follow at uh, Wellchow later in the year. And uh, we've got the Anshelf oil project. Um, we're going to be drilling an appraisal sidetrack well there also later in the year just sorting out the rig situation. And we've already uh, identified a rig and are permitting for the drilling of a, a, a one of our gas prospects over in the Western country. I could just say to you that I joined the company before um, well chow happening with no ability to impact it at all. And I really like what the company had as a whole. That's why I joined the company. Then well chow came in. So, I'm, and we've, um, uh, you know, we're backing our ability in these other projects. That's just a, a bit of a uh, snapshot of the way things look in Austria. And the only thing missing on this is the actual pipelines. But for example, uh, Wellchow Discovery is only 18 kilometers from the nearest pipeline. Those sort of uh, infrastructure, even though it seems like a frontier place when you go there, uh, it's close to uh, lots of things happening. And in Austria, a lot of, plate, a lot of industry is decentralized. I'm not just stuck around Vienna and uh, around the capital cities like it is here. We're only the third operator in the company for in 75 years. So until ADX 
got there. You probably never hardly ever heard about the industry in Austria. But it's substantial. Uh, it's substantial. And now we're the third operator and um, we're doing the right thing and the government's looking after us. There's very high value in the markets for hydrocarbons over there. The gas price, as you can imagine, is very high because of what's happened in Europe. There's nothing to suggest that it's going to go back to where it was. So if you find gas in Austria, it's worth a multiple of finding gas in other jurisdictions. We'll talk a bit more about that later. later. The permitting is good. Again, this gets back to the attitude of the authorities and the regulatory body bodies. If you follow the processes correctly, you get the permits. Probably the longest it takes there is nine months and quite often it only takes four months. Now you can't even do that here in West Australia where we don't have quite the problems they've got in Victoria, for example. It's very difficult getting through the permitting process here in Australia by comparison. This is just a little slide that talks to the fact that, again, uh, there's advancement in um, Austria on the renewable side. For example, um, RAG, who's um, one of the two main companies there, their main business this day, uh, these days is looking at carbon sequestration or carbon storage, carbon dioxide storage in their produced fields. That's partly what gave the opening for ADX to get into the country. They just weren't exploring anymore. So there's already a lot happening in the renewables sphere. You don't have to be inventing it yourself. There's ways for us to join in um, when we're ready. This is a very quick snapshot of Welchow. Now, I drove out there when I went across. Uh, I it's a bit hard to say, but I, I think this is more or less north that way and that's south. So this way you get into the Alps. And you can see you're sort of in the foothills country out here. And you drive in along a road, beautiful road, and there's Welch, our very big anticoin, 100 square kilometres, pretty big. Only mapped on 2D seismic and uh, by surface mapping. We have other prospects near it. But the only other well drilled anywhere near it, uh, back in 1989, Molland, which was a gas discovery, tested it around about 4 million a day and never went anywhere because gas wasn't worth much back in 1989. Different now, very different now. This, um, this again just shows you, uh, we're not talking about the mature fields we have over in the northeast of the country. We're talking about the stuff that uh, provides the growth opportunities for the country. Uh, for the company, we've got Anchoff here um, and uh, Welchow down here, and then the Western Gas Project's over here. So we're, we're gonna be doing more work at Welchow, as you know, just um, testing soon. We're going to be doing a sidetrack of the um, Anchoff uh, 1 well over here, and we're going to be drilling one of these large prospects we've got over here in the, in the gas units. They have a very high uh, assessed um, chance of success. Oh, sorry. Sorry, folks. A bit too far there. Oh. Wait a minute. There we go. Uh, this is just a, one slide on Anchoff. Here's the existing discovery that was made. We're then drilled out here. We're going to sidetrack this way. We know the sands go that way. Uh, we know uh, that every structure, every valid structure you can map out here is full of oil. So we've just got to get the mapping of the structures right. Most places you go, you've got a few extra factors to, that you have to get right. So we've just got to get that structural mapping right. So we're going to be sidetracking. The spot we're working from is just a very small, uh, surprising how small it is, in amongst beautiful uh, farmland, a horse stud over here. And uh, this uh, facility that you can now see there uh, is capable of producing 3,000 barrels a day. So there's a fair bit of confidence in the company that we're going to get the production up here. It's pretty much was sitting on the shelf as an as new second hand facility that's never really been used. This slide really, the, the main point about this slide is just to show why the company is so confident about its prospects over in the West. This seismic character is of an existing field that's produced 155 BCF. And this, not very far away, less than two kilometers away, is the uh, IAA or Eersdorf prospect. 
that's one of the two that we're permitting as the candidate for drilling later this year and for which we've already got a rig slot available. Now, uh, they look very similar and uh, I think we see about um, 38 BCF of gas uh, on its own. doesn't sound like a big number, but when your gas is worth six or eight times what it is in the North Sea, it's equivalent to something much bigger. Really a value um, added adding sort of opportunity if the company drills it. It's not the only prospect we have here, but I just sort of showcase it, why there's such confidence at this stage technically in the prospect. Talking about well chow, uh, where we're at, you know, we, we drilled the well, um, had all these shows, couldn't properly test them at the time, had the rig for a limited time and had to give it back to OMV, had time to suspend the well. Uh, that, that was very advantageous, really, for a small company like AGS because it's given us the opportunity to protect the world and now think through what is the best way to test it. Bear in mind that we're in a fractured carbonate here. It's not like a sandstone reservoir we have in Australia. So instead of one prosody system, three prosody systems to think through, and you've got to get your test design right. Now, this gives us the time uh, for Ian to bring in whatever help he needs to get the test program right. All of these are, are work that's ongoing. It takes a bit of time, so we get to see everything. A lot of the, a lot of the time when you drill well, let's say offshore, it costs your fortune to be able I'll show you that's how fractured the core is and in my opinion my opinion the core was cut opportunistically at the time because we saw terrific shows but didn't cut into the best rocks that we encountered so i, I expect better reservoir property elsewhere in the um uh, the section of the steinum uh, that we've seen for example than you see in this core and yet you can see how it's connected up to these fractures and I think in uh, limestone systems, we've got relatively low porosity. You want the fracture networks to connect it all up. But it's also why you've got to be very careful about how you go about testing. Because there's such a difference between um, the permeability or the ability to flow of a hole versus something that's a micro uh, hole in the, in the rock. So right now, um, we've got a, uh, a hard data point which we didn't have before, showed our mapping was pretty good. So we can, in due course, go back to that and remap and build our confidence in the mapping of the structure. We're doing all these other studies. Once we've done that, then we revise the resource estimate and then we go to the testing program. So there's a news flow that's going to come out between now and uh, testing later in the year. Ooh, I'm not sure what this one, uh, well, really, Key thing here is over here. Basically, if you take the value of um, gas in uh, well child, because you're dealing with onshore costs, onshore well costs, easy to tie in because you don't have to create the infrastructure. It's already there. Then the value of it compared to finding a gas field on the North Sea is something like six times. So if you found 50 BCF onshore, in Austria, it'd be worth as much to you as 300 BCF offshore in the North Sea. That's the difference. Just because the terms in Austria uh, I wouldn't, uh, are fair, but it's onshore costs. And, you, and, the, and the value of the gas is huge. Double what it is in the Eastern States of Australia, where we know it's gone through the roof. So, John, can we just pause for a minute? Yep. Dean needs to restart. Oh, um, oh for the webinar? Do you just the presentation. Yeah. Oops, sorry. It just needs a minute. Well, we just talked about this slide for those who are here. There's a, there's a lot to take in, but that's that's the bottom line, how valuable gas or oil is in Austria. And it's a bit of an illustration how difficult it is for small, uh, not just small companies, but companies in Australia who find an isolated oil or gas ship. Like, it's why it's so hard to get government support and all the rest of it, the money for it now, to 
drill a frontier well in Australia if there's not already infrastructure there, unless the government the government to change their attitude, uh, which they're starting to do, by the way. But you know, it's a lot easier. It's a bit like being in the US, you know, where there's just infrastructure everywhere. So if you find something, there's always a way to tie it in. In most places. Being on the map. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I went across to uh, Austria as part of my sort of due diligence and went down to the field and the young engineer drove me down the freeway 140 kilometres an hour with one hand talking to me <laughs> and then we got off uh, to look at uh, the project so it was like being someone's guard you know it was uh, beautiful manicured Gravelly roads, I, I thought we were on someone's, you know, home yeah, road to the house. Oh, no, no, you know, there's cycling signs going everywhere. Is it good to or still going? Incredible. I could dial into the zone, I think. Okay, yeah. But uh, when I came back and I had to go to Victoria and I was flying back from Victoria and, uh, you know, you come you come back, you come across the Nullarbor, you sort of enter the Nullarbor somewhere and just... Western South Australia, it wasn't, you couldn't see anything. There's no roads, no farms, no dams uh, for, you know, probably a quarter of an hour until you start to see stuff. Yes. Whereas over there, uh, you know, just everywhere. They just did a gas case. They didn't include the oil. Now, we don't actually know exactly what we've got. Uh, certainly, there is uh, some liquid hydrocarbons with the gas. And whether that's condensate or light oil, we don't know yet. We're going to need the testing to work it out. But they, they did just a case for us based on an assessed, this is pretty well, 330 BCF. And um, the value of that, you know, I think we're good to continue. All right. Okay. So, again, uh, you know, what it's really worth, depending on the composition, is, um, again, we need to test and find out. One, one of the issues, I'll just explain, one of the issues for us is in sandstone war, uh, which here in Australia we're very um, used to and a lot of places around the world are, you have a single, usually a single porosity system. But here, that is, the, that is the little spaces between the individual grains of rock. But here there's three. There's bugs, which 20 metres away from the world ball could be a cave. You don't know. And there's the matrix porosity, which generally relatively low, and then there's the fractures. It's quite difficult to evaluate them with conventional resources, and you tend to need to have a good test program to really know what you've got. So that's what's ahead of us. Uh, this is really just illustrating how dependent Austria are on gas coming from somewhere else. I think in 2023, 90% of their gas, which makes up a big part of their energy equation, was still coming from Russia. Now, that's not acceptable to the Austrian government, as you can imagine. So they're really hoping that we have stumbled onto something, that, not stumbled, that's not the right term, but that we've found something that's going to make a big difference to their economy and the risk they see uh, for the country. So I think we've really just discussed this. You know, we've got some challenges. There it is. Uh, you know, those of us from Australia, we've looked at this sort of as mountainous. The Austrian sort of was just, you know, rolling hills, a uh, single road up there, very nice road, big well site. And um, that's the rig on site. Uh, uh, you know, snow came after I'd been there. But, um, uh, you know, plenty of We've got all those. They're all going, already happening, and uh, we'll be testing in the future. So here's, I think, a slide that just talks to how significant this could be if it's anywhere near as big as what we were hoping for. Um, it will be 
really be very uh, significant for the company. And I think, you know, just to leave you with a thought, if it's as big, if we can prove it's as big as the potential says, then um, there's just going to be a lot of interest in um, in your company. Our partner, for example, MCF, uh, is formed of um, a group of uh, people who've been part of successful Canadian companies. They specifically formed a company to come back farm into projects in Europe, and their first job was ours. Uh, well, so they're pretty happy. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Some questions. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just going to run through some of the questions that came that came through um, on registration. And if you have any questions, um, everyone that is online, if you just want to submit them using the Q and A button, I did notice um, someone did stick their hand up. But if you can just um, put it through the Q and A, and then I'll get to that one at the end. Thank you. Um, so to our first question, um, and probably you're the best to answer this one, with all the positive news in the past few months, is there an underlying reason for the share price drop? And I know there's yeah, no hi, everyone. bond for that. So. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, look, uh, I almost make a rule not to talk about uh, share price. Uh, look, what, what we're trying to do is everything at our end to do things properly, drill wells, uh, get ourselves in a position to test uh, well chow. Now, obviously, there's a lot of attention on well chow, uh, but then again, I think most investors understand that we can't test this well till October uh, due to uh, environmental permitting. However, obviously, the fundamentals are there. That's why we've been able to uh, secure a, if you like, a large uh, financing package, which means that we can stay out of the market. Uh, for, for a significant uh, period of time. But I, I guess what we're seeing now is some, some very small volume trading. Uh, and, uh, you know, as uh, uh, John mentioned, uh, we'll have a lot of news flow coming out about Welchow, uh, but we're, we're not a one-trick pony. Uh, we'll be drilling Anshoff uh, to get our production up. Uh, we've got a very uh, exciting gas exploration prospect that's going to be funded 100% uh, by M&D. Which it, so it's it's not just ourselves that thinks we've got you know good prospects. We've had other companies come in and basically fund the majority of the drilling of our our, our prospects, uh, including uh, not only uh, Wellchow where we had MCF come in, and and now we're going to be drilling a gas prospect uh, with M and D, which is very exciting. So look, be a little bit patient. Uh, I've been at a conference in in London. And I guess a lot of professional investors look at it and they say, well, yeah, we, we, we see you've raised a bunch of money. It'll be quiet for a bit, but it's uh, it's a great trading opportunity for the rest of us who are not in this stock. That, that's a great um, answer for that one. Thanks, Ian. And I know that you spoke about the Anchoff Wells. Um, so the, the other question that came through was, assuming the success of the two additional Anchoff Wells, will the company achieve it? Positive cash flow this financial year. And I know you can't for for you know um, talk about forward statements, but you know, is there anything that you can say about that? Yeah, look, I mean, certainly um, last year we, until we had to shut in uh, Anshoff three, uh, which was producing averaging at around 110 barrels a day, then I think you know we we, uh, we were generating enough. Uh, operating revenue to, you know, cover our costs in, in Austria and, and our corporate costs. Uh, we, we had to shut in Anschoff uh, because we'd reached the limit uh, that you can test a well in Austria. And also we had to replace uh, what was a temporary facility with a permanent facility. So now, now we're, we're getting production rate back up uh, with Anschoff back producing and it's producing very well at a stable rate uh, together with the Vienna Basin. Uh, but the, the big potential for an increase in cash flow is actually Anshoff 2A, uh, the sidetrack well, uh, where, as John said, we uh, have the potential to drill into much better reservoir that can produce substantially uh, higher rates than Anshoff 3. So uh, that will be just towards the back end of, of uh, if you like, this calendar year. Uh, so we should get Anshoff in the ground uh, in uh, early October, 
Uh, we're just working on uh, rig slots. We're finalizing those slots uh, for the drilling of Anshoff and then following up uh, with the gas exploration well. But, uh, you know, that, that well should deliver uh, probably a, uh, at least uh, if, it, if it comes in as we expected, uh, a, a, you know, substantial increase uh, to our existing production rate and, and take us into positive territory. Uh, the Anshoff, the further Anshoff drilling uh, will be done on, you know, once we've assessed the results of Anshoff 2A, and I, I'd expect that was, is going to be probably towards uh, the middle of, of, of 2025. Thank you. Um, I think these last remaining questions are going to be back at you, John. Um, so, and I know you already spoke about the process for well, well child flow testing. Um, there was an additional add on to that one. And can you clarify if there is any damage to the well bore? Well, I, I don't think there's any damage uh, to the well bore itself. I mean, the, the casing's been run, so it's more or less uh, protected. Uh, for future um, testing operations. And um, I don't think that, yeah, as far as I'm, Ian actually might be better to answer this one, but I don't think there's any, yeah. I don't think that's an issue. Yeah, look, I mean, what, one of the things is obviously, is, uh, as uh, John has said, we, we case the well very quickly. One of the reasons we stopped drilling, because uh, there is another question about uh, deepening the well, um, we stopped drilling because we'd already intersected you know, a, a 450 metre hydrocarbon column. Um, and we, we then would have run the risk if we drilled into a, if you like, an unconsolidated uh, formation or something, we wouldn't be able to uh, run casing and test the well. But uh, what we're looking towards is multiple tests. We won't, won't be doing just one test. It's, uh, we've actually, uh, our releases really focused on the Steinem formation, which was the formation that was encountered in, uh, in Mollen. But we've actually intersected three other, four, sorry, two other formations, uh, all of which could be uh, also productive, and, and we're quite excited about. Uh, but typically, what what you do do um, with these wells is to perforate them and acidize them just to do any cleanup uh, of uh, you know any wellbore damage <coughs> you might have done. Uh, but for instance, Mullen. Uh, before it tested, was left open for over a year while they were drilling deeper, uh, deeper formations. So uh, we, we tried to treat this uh, very gently. Thank you. And just on the Steinham formation, um, do you believe that it can deliver a commercial gas condensate production rate? Yes or no? Well, we we'll think we can, but we haven't shown, we haven't proved that yet. So um, yeah, the proof will be in the testing, but we think we think we've got something that will flow at good rates there. Yeah, and look, if I could add, it's not just the Steinem. Uh, as I said, uh, the, the rifling formation above it uh, is uh, has had a substantial intersection. Uh, we've seen good fracture and buggy porosity, uh, and uh, again, that's something that hasn't been tested. I think we need to remind ourselves why we've got the Mullen well. Uh, you know, about uh, four kilometres away from us. The, this is a, a, a substantial new discovery. Uh, and uh, so we've discovered you basically a very large structure. Uh, we've intersected a large column. Uh, we've got multiple reservoirs to test. But, you know, we're, we're at the phase of a, a very big, uh, long learning opportunity, uh, which can actually deliver, you know, exceptional potential to the company. So it's going to take time. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy to be in a position in, in a small company when you, you've got, uh, I guess, uh, potentially a tiger by the tail. But it, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take some work and, and new competency uh, coming into the company to, to get the best out of this. Well, I, what I would add is just to, one of the things that gives us confidence is that uh, uh, post the MDT operations, when... When, when you're drilling the well and you've got a certain mud weight in there and you're drilling and circulating, there's an implied force that acts against anything coming in from the formation. And during the MDT operations or just after, when that force wasn't being applied, just the weight of the mud in the hole, hydrocarbons came into the hole. We've got, you know, a thousand units of gas, fluorescent and petroliferous odor. We, you know, uh, that, that's the smell of hydrocarbons in the air. Now, you know, we reported that 
in my personal experience, you don't get that unless you've got a, a hydrocarbons ready to come out of the reservoir. Now, uh, that was that one spot, and it's up to us to show that we can uh, draw hydrocarbons out of the reservoir over a much larger interval. That's what that's what the testing is all about. And so interval. Thanks, well, John. Be... Um, look, even though you're a little bit frozen on our screen, we can still hear you, so that's okay. okay. Um, and just um, I'm just going through these last questions because I know you've already addressed uh, some of these in the presentation. Um, I'm not sure if I heard um, the status of obtaining permits for the IIR gas well. Um, did you cover that? Uh, we did, but just, just before we did, there was a question just coming as, as uh, you lost um, sound there. And the question was, you know, I think, how big an interval can you test over? Uh, but that will come down to the test zone. Sometimes you open up a limited zone because that's the zone you favour. You don't want to draw something from anywhere else. And I think uh, in a fractured ritual, that's one of the things you keep in mind because the fractures can, in a bad case, go all the way down hundreds of metres and put you in contact. Now, we don't expect that necessarily that to be the case, but you, you really have to design fit for purpose and the design of the test program won't be uh, finalised until we've finished those other studies that we talked about. Yeah, look, the yeah. only thing I add to that, is, as, as I said earlier, we, we do have a minimum of, uh, of three zones. In fact, we have four zones. So what we want, I mean, the, the main objectives of testing are obviously everyone concentrates on productivity, uh, but also, so we want to understand what is the productivity of each of the zones because they each have a, a different character. Uh, what is the, the resource potential on a per well basis that could be recovered from each of those zones and, and they will have a, a slightly different character. And of course, what is the hydrocarbon character out of each of those zones. So right, right now we're actually uh, working on most likely up to three tests. And, and, and these tests won't be like for a day. They, 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 each test could be uh, for weeks. Um, and uh, the other good thing to understand um, is that in, in Austria, uh, if, we, if we, we, this is most likely to be well, whatever it is, it's going to be liquid rich. As a gas, it's going to be liquid rich. But one of the nice things is uh, if, if we end up producing any liquids for an exterior, extended period of time, we can also sell it. Um, so that also kind of helps uh, the economics of, you know, future appraisal wells, uh, et cetera. Okay, just another one that's come through online, um, and this is with relation to the Italian... Um, assets. Um, what do you think the chances are of the Italian authorities approving the Italian offshore oil development? Also likely timing. Yeah, look, I, I just had a, a, an extended conversation with our lawyers. Uh, as, we, as we know, the, uh, the, the, the recently new government of Milani uh, has, is, is a conservative government. Uh, we, we had to put up with five years of uh, the Cinque Terre government, which was very down on not, not just oil and gas development, any development, uh, even a, a train between, uh, you know, uh, Turin and uh, Lyon was was put on hold. Now, what we are seeing, obviously, is a, a big change. Um, and there's been overturned legislation uh, uh, by the courts. Uh, so, what we, we expect is that we'll go back to the legislation of 1989. There, there is an opportunity for the ministry to actually, um, uh, I said, contest that uh, legal outcome. However, our understanding is informally uh, this is unlikely to happen and the ministry's even changed its name, you know, from the Ministry of Economics to the Ministry of Economics and Energy. So what, what you're seeing in Europe is the recognition that we've taken energy for granted for too long. And I can not only say that it happens in Europe, but it happens in Australia as well. Uh, none of the governments are prepared to say we need oil and gas, yet our demand for oil and gas keeps, keeps growing. 
So, look, we'll, our, our strategy here is we'll, we'll accept the permit on the basis of gas exploration at this stage because also what we expect is that there will be, uh, over the next three to four months, a, a change in some of the personnel uh, within the ministry, and that's what tends to happen, you know, when you get these, uh, you know, shifts. Um, just for all of you who... Uh, are focused on Europe. There'll be the European elections very shortly. And again, we're, we're seeing sort of a, a bit of a wave of general conservatism, but also recognition of the importance of, uh, of, of energy. So, uh, sorry, that was a long, long question, but I, I think we, we will go to the ministry probably in, in three to six months, uh, just to kind of ensure that, uh, you know, we, we, we get the response we're looking for. But at this stage, I'm, I'm very highly confident uh, that we'll, we'll get uh, we'll get what we're looking for. Okay, well, there's no more questions that have come through. Um, thank you to everyone that submitted um, them on the registration. I will hand them over to um, our management team, and if there's anything further that they could add, they'll be, they'll get in touch with you via email. So I think that's a wrap. Amanda? Yeah. Oh, one question here. Well, you haven't made it open to questions in the room. Yeah, we've Oh, yes, sorry about that. Go ahead. <laughs> I was waiting patiently. Everyone's waiting to question me. Yeah, yeah, no, go uh, ahead. I've really come to the meeting being a long term shareholder.